K connected graphs recap of previous lecture we have discussed connectivity that is what is connectivity edge connectivity we have also covered bonds blocks and discuss the theorems based on cuts and connectivity content of this lecture we will discuss k connected graphs k connected graphs are used to ensure the fault tolerance in the communication network or similar such applications so a communication network is fault tolerant if it has alternative paths between vertices the more disjoint paths the better the network is in terms of reliability so but it requires the extra redundancy in terms of the vertices and the paths that we will see in this lecture we will prove that this alternative measure of connection is essentially the same as k connectedness so k connectedness will basically bring up the fault tolerance in the communication network graph or similar such applications now when k becomes one that is one connected uh, graphs we have already discussed so a graph is one connected if and only if each pair of vertices is connected by a path that definition we have already seen the connectedness so the if the entire graph is connected between any two pair of vertices if there is a path then we can generalize this one connectedness in terms of k a larger value of k that means k is greater than or equal to 1 then we define k connected graphs so like in one connected graph between any pair of vertices there is a path there is one path for every pair of vertices in the graph that we have seen for one connected graph we can extend it to k connected graphs thus we can see how we can ensure k different paths that is vertex disjoint or internally disjoint hence the discussion of k connected graphs for a larger value of k is more subtle and these intricacies we will go and discuss in this particular lecture so starting with a more value of k that is more than 1 that is let us start with the two connected graphs so when k is equal to 2 so it becomes two connected graphs the definition says that two paths from u to v are internally disjoint if they have no common internal vertex so this definition is to provide the connectivity between a pair of vertices let us say u and v in a graph so we can see in this particular diagram that for u and v we have two different paths one is from u to v the other is again internally disjoint two different paths are connecting u and v similarly if let us say this particular vertex is w if w and v also can be connected with two internally disjoint paths similarly u and w also if can be connected so that means for every pair of vertices
for every pair of vertices if we can show that there exist two paths two internally disjoint paths then for the entire graph g we can say that it's two connected a graph so hence the connectivity is very important so as we increase the value of k we have to ensure that that many number of internally disjoint paths exist between any two pair of vertices then only the entire graph will take this particular property of that value of k connectedness here in this example we have seen two connected graphs with this particular simple example we will go ahead and characterize two connected graphs later on whitney in 1932 has given a theorem for two connected graphs characterization so theorem is stated as a graph g having at least three vertices is two connected if and only if for each pair uv of a vertex set of a graph there exist internally disjoint uv paths in g whitney in 1932 has given this particular theorem this is this will characterize the two connected graph that means two connected graphs for a graph g exist if and only if each pair of this particular graph has internally disjoint uv pair of paths in internally disjoint here there are two different paths we are talking about let us prove this theorem which will characterize or will make a equivalent statement that two connected graph means that there exist internally disjoint uv path between any two pair of vertices of that particular graph let us see the proof first we will see the sufficiency condition so in sufficiency condition let us assume that there exist internally disjoint uv paths let us assume or we are given this that g has internally disjoint uv paths this part so now we can see that if we delete one vertex then we cannot separate u from v that means u and v they have internally disjoint paths if one vertex is deleted or removed there will be an alternative path between u and v so u and v will not be disconnected if we remove it since this condition is given for every pair uv so deletion of one vertex cannot make any vertex unreachable from each other hence we conclude that the graph is two connected given that g has the internally disjoint uv path between every two pair of vertices now we will see the necessary condition so necessary condition we'll say that we will assume that a graph g is two connected and we have to prove that it then in that graph there exist internally disjoint uv path for every pair of vertices so necessary condition we will assume that the graph is two connected to prove that the graph has internally disjoint paths between any pair of vertices uv between every pair of vertices uv we will prove by induction on the distance between uv that g has internally disjoint uv paths so the base step assumes that the distance between u and v is 1 now we have also seen that or we have already assumed that the graph has at least three vertices so if the distance between u and v is one there must exist another vertex 
and if we delete this particular edge from the graph, so the graph without uv will have another path. Hence, the kappa prime is greater than kappa is greater than 2. So, the uv path in g minus uv is internally disjoint in g from u to v formed by an edge in uv itself. So, this particular base step is clear because if we remove one particular edge even then this pair of vertices is connected through a internally disjoint paths which exist in the original graph G. Now, we will see the induction step that d u v is greater than 1 assume that d u v is k that means, and w be the vertex. So, u and v they are basically separated by the distance k and that is greater than 1. Let us assume that there is a vertex w which is just before v on the shortest uv path. Hence, this part of the shortest path up to u to w will have the distance k minus 1. Why? Because w is closer to v. So, the remaining path will be having the distance of k minus 1. So, by induction hypothesis, we can assume that this g has internally u w paths, which are internally disjoint paths, internally disjoint u w paths. Let us call it as p u to w and another path internally disjoint is let us say q, which will connect u to w having that distance k minus 1. Now, if this particular vertex v is an element of or having an element v in it, that means, this path or this particular disjoint path will also include v, then we can find the desired path in the cycle p union q. Suppose, it is not there in this particular example we are shown. Then since g is 2 connected that we have assumed. So, g minus w is connected and contains a u v path r. If r avoids p or q then we are done because this will be a one path w to v and u to w we have disjoint paths and another alternative path will be there or if it is not using if it avoids p or q then we are done. But r may share the internal vertices with both p and q let z be the the last vertex of r before v belonging to p union q that means belonging to this particular cycle. So, by symmetry we may assume that z is in p. So, we combine u z of p plus z v of r. So, if we combine them, it will give the two internally disjoint paths. One is shown in this way, the other is via q up to w and w to v. There are two internally disjoint paths. This is one path, this is another path and no vertices is internally disjoint. Hence, we have shown that if the graph is two connected, then there is we have shown that through the induction that for all values of 2, this will be internally disjoint paths exist in the graph. Expansion lemma, if g is k connected graph and 
g prime is obtained from g by adding a new vertex y with at least k neighbors in g then g prime is k connected so let us see the proof quickly we will not go in more detail so in this particular proof we will see that the separating set of g prime must be of size at least k why because it is k connected graph so if y will be in that separating set then s minus y will separate g so the size of s will be k plus 1 if y is not in s and the neighbor of y is basically belongs to s then s is at least k otherwise y and n y neighbor of y minus s lie in the same single component of g prime s thus again s must be separate g and the separating set size is at least k hence it is k connected hence g prime is also k connected now we will see the theorem so this theorem will characterize two connected graphs so for a graph g with at least three vertices the following conditions are equivalent and characterize two connected graphs that is the first condition says that g is connected and has no cut vertex the second condition says that for all x y pair of vertices which are there in the vertex set of g there are internally disjoint x y paths for all x y pair of vertices which are there in the vertex set of g there is a cycle which passes through x and y and finally the last statement which will characterize two connected graphs and equivalent to all the three is if little delta of g is greater than 1 greater than or equal to 1 and every pair of edges in g lies on a common cycle then it will also characterize two connected graphs let us see their equivalence so a is equivalent to b that means if a graph is connected and has no cut vertex if a graph is connected and has no cut vertex this will be cut vertex if it has no cut vertex then there will be internally disjoint paths hence from a we have proved the b and from b if there is no if there are internally disjoint paths obviously there will not be any cut vertex both are equivalent then b and e, c they are equivalent so b says that for all x y there are internally disjoint x y paths there are two paths and c says that for all x y there is a cycle so that means if this particular internally disjoint paths are there through passing through x and y they will be forming a cycle through x and y hence b and c they are equivalent that we have already seen so for equivalence from d to c let us assume that the condition little delta is greater than or equal to 1 which will imply that the vertices x and y are not isolated we then apply the last part of d to the edges incident to x and y if there is only one such edge then we use it and any edge incident to the third vertex to complete the proof we assume g satisfies the equivalence properties a and c and then derive this particular d since g is connected little delta of g is greater than or equal to 1 now consider the two edges uv and xy two edges let us consider so add to g the vertex w with the neighborhood of uv and z with the neighborhood of xy now since g is two connected by using the expansion lemma which will imply that the resulting graph g prime is also two connected hence the condition c holds in g prime so w and z they lie on a cycle and this cycle 
will be like this since w and z have the degrees 2 so c must contains the path u w v and x z y and this will be added to the cycle c but not the edges u u v and x y so replacing u u v u w v and x z y in c with the edges with the edges u v and x y this will yield the desired cycle which is passing through u v and x and y so hence we have proved that if these conditions are given then there exists a cycle and hence from d we have proved the condition c which c says that there is a cycle which goes through x and y for all x and y pairs hence all four conditions are equivalent and they characterize two connected graphs that means the two connected graph is a connected and has no cut vertex a two connected graph for all x y pair of vertices of that particular graph there are internally disjoint x y path in two connected graphs for every two connected graphs for all x y pair of vertices there is a cycle which will pass through any two pair of vertices and also two connected graph where little delta g is greater than or equal to 1 and every pair of edges in g lies on a common cycle so all four conditions characterizes the two connected graphs and they are all four conditions are equivalent and we have stated that now we will go ahead about two connected sorry k connected graphs and k edge connected graphs so we started with two connected graphs now we generalize the connectivity up to k that is it can be more than two also so k connected graphs and k edge connected graphs so there are two different type of connectivity we are talking about when we say k connected graph we say k vertex connected and k edge connected graphs so let us see the few definitions so given x y pair of vertices in the graph g the set s which is a subset of vertices minus x y is an x y separator or a x y cut if g minus s or g without s has no x y path take this example so x and y they are set of vertices which are there in g they passes through a set of vertices called s where s is without x y a subset of vertices which can be there now this is called x y separator or x y cut if we remove x y so if we remove s from the graph so x and y will have no path to connect x y so x y becomes disconnected if s it will be not present in the graph hence this is called a x y separator or x y cut so let kappa x y be the minimum size of this particular x y cut and lambda x y be the maximum size of the set of pairwise internally disjoint x y paths for x y a subset of vertex set of the graph g and x y path is a path having the first vertex in the vertex set x and the last vertex is in y and no other vertex in x union y exist and x y cut must contain an internal vertex of every x y path and no vertex can cut two internally disjoint x y path therefore always kappa x y is at least lambda of x y again i am repeating so for internally for two internally disjoint x y path if we take out an vertex from this path it will not disconnect why because it has internally disjoint path 
another vertex also if it is removed together they will disconnect the graph hence if let us say the graph has lambda different x y paths then taking out vertex from each path will form the x y separator or x y cut hence the minimum size of x y cut must be at least the maximum number of internally disjoint paths between x and y thus the problem of finding smallest cut and the largest set of internally disjoint paths are the dual problems that we are going to encounter here in k connected graphs so to illustrate through an example this particular concept of duality we will see this particular example here the separator for x y cut this is x and this is y we have to identify a separator we will use a green ink for that separator vertices now this s comprises of b is plugged out from this internally disjoint path then c which is plugged out from this internally disjoint path between x and y then z which is plugged out from this internally disjoint path between x and y and d which is plugged out from this internally disjoint path from x and y so four vertices which will form the separator or x y cut is being picked up one from every vertex hence the kappa that is minimum of minimum size of x y cut is at most 4 now we have also seen that these particular four vertices separator of size 4 we have taken out from four different pair of internally disjoint x y paths 1 2 3 4 hence this particular lambda x y which is the maximum x y disjoint paths is basically at least 4 since we know that from the previous discussion kappa x y is basically at least lambda of x y and kappa x y is basically 4 and lambda x y is at least 4 hence by taking up these all inequalities we can conclude that kappa of x y is equal to lambda of x y and that is equal to 4 in this particular example that is what is the duality that is the minimum cut is equal to the maximum number of internally disjoint paths between a pair of vertices x and y so we are solving this local problem between the pair of vertex vertices which is x and y what about other pair of vertices the same particular concept we will check and find out this particular inequality for other pair of vertices now we will consider another pair that is now the pair is w and z so the kappa w z so kappa means this is one vertex this is another vertex this is another vertex so three vertices if we plug out this will disconnect w and z hence kappa is equal to the to the lambda w z lambda means each vertex is taken from each vertex is taken from internally disjoint paths w and z, sorry w and z this is one path then this is one path w and z w and z this is another path 
So let us again see that. So this is W and this is Z. Let us see whether it has internally disjoint paths or not. So between W and Z, this is one path and this particular vertex we have included in the separator. Between W and Z, there will be another path and this particular vertex X we have included in the separator. Between W and Z, there is another path which is going via Y and B is another included in the separator. So if you remove them from the graph, this is W Z separator cut. If you remove it, then W and Z will be disconnected. Hence, the minimum size of W Z here is 3 and the, and the graph G is basically having for every pair of vertices, there are 3 internally disjoint UV paths. We have seen we can op obtain analogous equality for edge disjoint paths also and there we can see that although the kappa wz is equal to 3, it will take 4 edges to break all wz paths and there are 4 pairwise edge disjoint wz paths. So although there are 3 kappa value is 3, but when we talk about the edge disjoint, it requires 4. Let us see where are those 4. So, this is W z. If you want to disconnect through the edges, so that means if we plug this 1, 2, 3, 4, then W and z will be disconnected. And the size 1, 2, 3, 4. Hence, it takes 4 particular edges to break W z paths, and there are 4 pairwise edge disjoint W z paths. So, this is one W z path, this is another W z path, this is another W z path, and this particular edge, if we take, so edge disjoint W z path we have also obtained. Now with this local phenomena between x and y vertices, now we see that the Menger theorem which is given in 1927, if x, y are the vertices of the graph G and x, y is not having an edge in G, then the minimum size of x, y cut equals the maximum number of pairwise internally disjoint x, y paths. So, this is the local theorem that is we this particular Menger theorem is now being stated between a particular pair of x, y vertices, but for the entire graph for every pair of vertices this has to be satisfied then only this particular condition for Menger theorem in globally applicable for a graph that we will see at the end. So, let us see the proof of uh, this Menger theorem. Uh, for the proof, let us assume an x, y cut and this particular x, y cut must contain the internal vertices from each path in the set of pairwise internally disjoint x, y path that we have already seen. These vertices must be distinct. So, this inequality we have already also seen that kappa x, y is at least lambda x, y, y because each vertex is picked out from a internally disjoint path which is lambda x, y number of such paths are there. So, hence the minimum size of the cut is at least equal to the number of internally disjoint x, y path that is lambda value. Now, to prove the equality, so to prove the equality that means we have to we have to prove that lambda x, y is also at least kappa x, y. So, we have to basically show that there are lambda x, y 
paths are there. So, to prove the equality, we use the induction on the number of nodes on in the graph. Let us assume that the number of nodes is equal to 2 and also the condition of the theorem says that x and y should not have a direct edge. So, if there are only two nodes and there is no edge, what will happen then? The connectivity between x and y is 0 and there are no internally disjoint path. Hence, the basic step is proved. Now, let us go to the induction step when the number of nodes is greater than 2. Now, here let us assume a value k which is nothing but the size of x y cut in the graph g and now we construct k different pair wise internally disjoint x y path to show that lambda is at least kappa x y and kappa x y is equal to k. So, k different internally disjoint x y path we have to construct and hence to prove this particular theorem. Note that since neighbor of x this is x. So, so this is the neighborhood of x and if this is y, so there exists a neighborhood of y. Since neighborhood of x and neighborhood of y are x y cuts, that means if we remove neighborhood all the vertices which are there in the neighborhood of x, it will disconnect x and y. Similarly, if we remove all the vertices of the neighborhood of y, then also x and y will be disconnected. Also, no minimum cut, but we are looking for a minimum cut that is kappa x y. No minimum cut properly contains n x that is a neighbor of x and neighbor of y that we know means we have to form a minimum cut. So, case 1 we have to see when g has a minimum x y cut s other than the neighborhood n x neighborhood of x or neighborhood of y. So, to obtain the k desired path we combine x s paths and s y path. So, s is you know that a separator or a x y cut. So, we combine x s path and s y paths obtained from the induction hypothesis. So, that we can see. So, this is x this is s all the vertices and now we, we form x s paths. Similarly, for y and s these edges will form y s paths. This is x s paths shown by red lines. This is y s paths shown again here on the right side. So, by induction hypothesis we have obtained these particular desired paths. Now, let v 1 be the set of vertices on x on x s paths. Let us say that this set of vertices will be the v 1 and v 2 be the vertices on s y paths. Now, we claim that s that separator is equal to v 1 intersection v 2. Since s is the minimal x y cut, so every vertex of s lies on x y path and hence s is a subset of v 1 intersection v 2. Now, if v is an element of v 1 intersection v 2 minus s, then following the x v portion of some x s path and then v y portion of some s y path yield a x y path that avoids x y cut s. This is impossible. So, s is equal to v 1 intersection v 2. By the same argument, v 1 omits n y neighbor of y minus s and v 2 omits neighbor of x minus s. So, from h 1 by adding to the graph which is induced by v 1 
a vertex y prime with the edges from s from h2 here this is h2 so from h2 by adding the vertices to to the induced subgraph of v2 a vertex x prime that we will see in the next slide with the edges to s every x y path in g which is starts from with an x s path contained in h1 so every x y prime cut in h1 is an x y cut in g therefore kappa of x y prime is equal to k similarly kappa of h2 is x prime and y that is equal to the k since v1 omits neighbor of y minus s and v2 omits neighbor of x minus s both h1 and h2 are smaller than g hence the induction hypothesis yields that lambda h1 x comma y prime is equal to the k is equal to the lambda h2 x prime y hence since v1 intersection v2 is equal to s so deleting y prime from k paths in h1 and x prime from k paths in h2 yields the desired x s paths and s y paths in g that combine to form k pair wise internally disjoint x y paths in g now case 2 is also very similar case 2 says that every minimum x y cut is either the neighbor x n x or n y so the same thing also is applicable in this particular case hence we have constructed pair wise internally disjoint paths that is of size lambda hence it proves the theorem now we will see a definition why because this vertex version of menger theorem we have seen now we have to prove the edge version of the menger theorem for that we have to see this particular special kind of graph which is called a line graph we are using the line graph for it so a line graph of a graph g is denoted by lg is the graph whose vertices are the edges of g so again let us see the definition a line graph of g is written as lg which is also a graph whose vertices are the edges of the original graph g and the edges of line graph is ef when e is basically an edge uv in original graph and f is again an edge vw in the graph that means these two edges are touching at v then it will form an edge in the line graph let us take this particular example let us see that this is a graph we want to construct a line graph of this particular graph according to this particular definition so line graph is a is a graph whose vertices are the edges of g so this particular edge is e so this become a vertex this is f so let us see that this is an edge so it becomes a vertex called e this is another edge in a graph so here it will become a vertex and here this is a edge edge called h so this also will become a vertex and g will also becomes a vertex of a, a graph so there are four vertices because 1 2 3 four different edges are there in the line graph four different vertices will be there now edges of this line graph ef when an edge two edges of the main graph they joins they will form an edge ef in the main graph so ef this this edge and this edge will join at this end so it will form an edge ef similarly f and h they are joining in the vertex so fh will be an edge similarly gh will be an edge then eg will be an edge also f and g they are touching so f and g also will be edge so this will be a line graph of the graph g 
So, line graph of a graph is a graph whose where is the vertices of a line graph are the edges of the original graph and the edges of the line graph is when the edges of the original graph are meeting then it will form an edge in a line graph. So, if a graph is given we can construct a line graph of a graph. Now, let us see the theorem. So, if x and y are distinct vertices of a graph or a graph g then the minimum size of x y disconnecting set of the edges here we are we have changed the terminology here we are calling it as disconnecting set of edges. In the previous theorem we have seen the separating set of vertices. So, the minimum size of an x y disconnecting set of edges is equal to the maximum number of pairwise edge disjoint x y paths there we were talking about vertex disjoint paths. Hence, this is the edge version of the Menger theorem. This is a local, local means for x y only we are considering one pair of vertices. Let us see the proof. We are given a graph g we will modify to g prime by adding two more new vertices s and t this s and t they are added up and two new edges s x and y t they are added. So, this is called a g prime. So, this g prime does not change kappa prime and lambda prime. So, this is kappa prime and this is lambda prime. So, this is not going to change in the original graph and we can think of each path as starting from this particular edge S x and ending with this particular edge y t. So, a set of edges disconnects y from x in g if and only if the corresponding vertices in L g prime we have to obtain a line graph of g prime. So, if the set of edges which disconnects y from x in g this corresponds to or this is equivalent to saying that the vertices of L g that is a line graph form an S x and y t cut. Similarly, the edge disjoint x y paths in g becomes internally disjoint s x and y t paths in l g prime. So, edge disjoint here in this particular graph will become vertex disjoint in the line graph and vice versa. So, having done this now we will apply the previous theorem that is the vertex version of Menger theorem 4.2.17 to this line graph l g prime and this will yield as kappa prime. So, this particular on the line graph if we apply this particular kappa prime kappa l g prime s x and y t minimum cut is equal to lambda of l g prime s x and y t this is the internally disjoint pairs between s x and y t and we know that this particular kappa of l g prime this is equal to the kappa prime of the graph g. So, kappa prime that is equal to kappa prime x y similarly lambda l g prime is equal to the lambda prime in the graph g. So, the line graph will convert it to the line graph of a graph will convert the problem so that the vertex version can be applied and that is equivalent to the edge version solution. So, deletion of an edge will reduce the connectivity by at most one. So, let us use this particular lemma in the next theorem and this is the global version of the theorem. So, the theorem says that the connectivity of g equals the maximum k such that lambda x y 
is at least k for all x y pair of vertices. So, the edge connectivity of G equals the maximum k such that lambda prime x y is at least k for all x y set of pairs. So, conclusion in this lecture we have discussed the k connected graphs, k edge connected graphs, Menger theorem and line graph. Thank you.